I'm Amashni. In this lesson, we are again dealing with equations that have denominators. We will work with fractions that contain terms that need to be factorized. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve equations with denominators that must be factorized. Now it's time for us to apply our knowledge of factorizing to solving some equations. Have a look at this example. Solve for x if x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 2x is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2. Now we already know the processes that we need to solve this equation. But remember, to make our equation simpler, we must find the lowest common denominator. Now if we look at this example and take x squared minus 2x, times x minus 2 as our common denominator and then multiply this by each of the terms, our calculations become very complicated. But we'll eventually get to our answer. Remember, we try to keep our calculations as simple as possible. To do this, we must find the lowest common denominator. If you remember, previously we factorized x squared minus 2x to be x times x minus 2. So we can write this expression as x plus 2 divided by x multiplied by x minus 2 is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2. Now, what is the LCD? What number includes all of these factors? Do you see that the LCD is x multiplied by x minus 2. Now we can solve our equation, but remember we must multiply each of the terms by the LCD. Now what do you remember about keeping the balance in the equation? Whatever I do on the left hand side of the equation, I must do on the right hand side. This means that if I multiply the left hand side by the LCD, I must do the same on the right hand side. So multiplying by the LCD, we get x plus 2 divided by x into x minus 2. Now remember, we are working with fractions, which means that when I'm multiplying, I must write the LCD divided by 1. So the LCD is x into x minus 2 divided by 1 is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2 multiplied by the LCD, which is x into x minus 2 divided by by 1. Now we look to cancelling terms. x divides into x one time. x divides into x once. x minus 2 divides into x minus 2 once. x minus 2 divides here once. x minus 2 divides here once and here once. We are left with x plus 2 is equal to 2 times x. Wow, so now this is a really simple equation. Although it contained an x squared initially, we now have a linear equation. I will subtract minus 2x from both sides. I get x plus 2 minus 2x is equal to 2x minus 2x. This simplifies to minus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now I subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. I get minus x plus 2 minus 2 is equal to minus 2. I get minus x is equal to minus 2. Remember, we are solving for positive 1x. So I get x is equal to positive 2 when I divide by minus 1 on both sides. Now, let's check our answer by substituting this value into the original equation. The left hand side is equal to x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 2x. If we substitute 2 for x, we get 2 plus 2 divided by 2 squared minus 2 times 2. 2 plus 2 is 4 divided by 2 squared is 4 minus 2 times 2 which is 4. We get 4 divided by 4 minus 4 is 0. But wait a minute. The denominator is 0. 
And this is not allowed because we cannot divide by zero. Now, although we solved our equation correctly, we cannot use the solution. So let's go back to our calculation. Here we see that our LCD, which was the lowest common denominator, was x multiplied by x minus 2. Now we know that our denominators are not allowed to be equal to 0, which means our restriction would have been that x is not allowed to equal to 0. And here, x minus 2 is not allowed to equal to 0, which means that x is not allowed to equal to 2. This means that for this equation, there are no solutions. Or in other words, there are no values for x that satisfy the equation. Let's look at the next example. Solve for x if 1 divided by x squared minus 1 is equal to 2 divided by x squared minus x minus 2. You should recognize these denominators from when we revised factorizing. x squared minus 1 factorized to x minus 1 into x plus 1. x squared minus x minus 2 factorized to x minus 2 into x plus 1. Now we can write this equation as 1 divided by x minus 1 into x plus 1 is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2 into x plus 1. Now that we've factorized our denominators, we can find the LCD and solve our equation. The LCD must consist of all the factors from the denominator. So in this expression, we must include x minus 1 and x plus 1. In this expression, we must include x minus 2 and x plus 1 in the LCD. But we know that x plus 1 is already written here. So all that we need to add is x minus 2. So our LCD is x minus 1 into x plus 1 into x minus 2. Now, what is the next step? How do we simplify this equation? Now, we have two terms here and we have to multiply each of them by the LCD. Remember, we are working with fractions, so when I multiply, I must multiply by the LCD divided by 1. Let's have a look. I've got 1 divided by x minus 1, x plus 1. I need to multiply by the LCD. Let's go back. The LCD is x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. So we can write that. x minus 1 x plus 1 x minus 2 divided by 1 is equal to 2 divided by x minus 2 x plus 1 multiplied by the LCD over 1. x minus 2 divided by 1. Wow, you need to keep your wits about you. Let's cancel out factors and simplify this equation. The factor x minus 1 cancels with this factor x minus 1 and we are left with 1 and 1. x plus 1 cancels with this factor x plus 1 and we are left with 1. Here, x minus 2 cancels off with this factor x minus 2 and we are left with 1 x plus 1 cancels with this x plus 1 and we're left with 1. Now let's rewrite our equation. We've got 1 multiplied by x minus 2 <coughs> is equal to 2 multiplied by x minus 1. Let's simplify. We get x minus 2 is equal to 2 multiplied into each of the terms in the brackets gives me 2 times x, which is 2x. 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Now, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. And here, 2x minus 2x minus 2. I'm left with minus x minus 2 is equal to minus 2. Now, I'm going to add 2 to both sides of the equation. Get minus x minus 2 plus 2 is equal to minus 2 plus 2. And I'm left with minus x is equal to 0. Now, 
I need to solve for positive 1x, so I need to divide both sides by negative 1, and I get that x is equal to 0. So, we've solved the equation and we know what our answer is. What is there still left for us to do? Yes, we've got to check our answers, but I'm going to leave the checking of this answer for you to do as part of your task. Now, we are working with fractions. What other potential problem do we have? Let's have a look. In the question, we know that the denominators are only defined when they are not equal to zero. So, I've got to make sure that x squared minus 1 is not equal to zero, and here, x squared minus x minus 2 is not equal to zero. Now let's check by substituting our value for x into each of these denominators. For x equals zero, and you have x squared minus one, which is the first denominator, we substitute zero for x, we get zero squared minus one. Now zero squared is zero. Zero minus one gives me an answer of minus one. So, for x equals 0, the denominator x squared minus 1 evaluates to minus 1. This means that our denominator is fine. Now let's check the other one. For x equals 0, we are checking this denominator, which is x squared minus x minus 2. And substituting 0 for x, we get 0 squared minus 0 minus 2. And this evaluates to minus 2. Great, so x equals 0 does not make the denominator 0, so it is allowed. Now let's summarize what we've learned in today's lesson. If an equation includes a fraction that must be factorized, look for a common factor, a difference of two squares, or a trinomial. Here's an example for you to do on your own. Solve for q if... 5 divided by q plus 3 minus 3 divided by q minus 3 is equal to 3q minus 1 divided by q squared minus 9. And then check your answer. I hope you enjoy this lesson. So until next time, goodbye.